Okay, it's time for another Shannon Reads Those Book Adventure with The Odyssey by Homer. The Odyssey, yay! Oh my goodness gracious, this was, not only is this technically an epic poem, it was an epic journey <laughs> to read, and this is, uh... The Odyssey is the 25th book that I have read for my Those Books exploration. It is written by Homer or credited to Homer and it is estimated to have been written at 800 in 800 BC. And this one only makes one of the lists that I'm following for this project, which is the Book Riot Zero to Well Read list. But when I go back and look at some of my lists, a lot of them it wouldn't qualify for. I have one that's on Canadian books, not qualify. I have one, the Modern Library list is simply the 20th century. This is before then. And then the Librarians list is novels. So it's not a novel, it's an epic poem. So DQ'd, DQ'd, doesn't mean it isn't a good book. <laughs> I really enjoyed this one. I was so excited to actually understand it, especially since it's a really challenging text. And earlier in the this year, in the summer, I read the Iliad, which is, um, and the Odyssey is in sorts a sequel to the Iliad because it continues uh, these stories from Greek uh, mythology, but it's afterwards. The Iliad follows the Trojan is, is around the Trojan War, and then the Odyssey is actually the character of Odysseus, his journey home after the Trojan War. So that's, you know, before and after, so yeah. And I, I the Iliad was a challenging read, um, and I even, I, even though I listened to it on audiobook, I also read it along some of the time, and I found it really, really hard, and had to read the Coles notes, and it was... It was a challenge. On the flip side, the Odyssey actually I found quite understandable. I did find some of the different parts a little harder to follow. One of the things that was really helpful was that this particular edition, and this translation by Richard Ladmore is wonderful, but this particular edition has a one line at the top that gives you a sort of like grounding point of what's going on in the story. Um, and it also has at the beginning of the book, in the table of contents, it has a very, very um, succinct descriptions of what happens in each of the books. And I found that if I had read the book and then had a few days where I hadn't done any reading, I would come back and read what happened in the previous chapter in sort of like one or two lines. Or if I had read the particular chapter and was having trouble understanding what was going on, I had a, a reference point. I had something to go back and help and be like, oh, this is what's going on. So that was really helpful. <laughs> so that said, the, like, it wasn't it actually, it's so weird because it's like, I, I can hear in my mind, it's like, the Odyssey is the 10 year epic journey of Odysseus to return home to Ithaca. And like, I know that, like that, I, I think I knew that before going in. I don't know why I knew that going in, um, but it, maybe, maybe I talked about it a lot during my Friday read. So I have that my one liner for this one is, it's Odysseus's 10 year epic journey returning home to Ithaca. Um, but on the other side of that, we also have what's going on in Ithaca, where his wife Penelope is, she is being just surrounded by suitors who want to marry her and have her and Odysseus's fortune. Uh, and um, they just stick around eating all the food and partying it up. And then during this time, their son is growing into being a man. So, but we mostly follow Odysseus. And then there's also, because it is <laughs> an epic Greek poem, there is lots of, um, you know, meddling of the gods. <laughs> this one, it's not quite as much as the Iliad, but we definitely have Athena is here a lot. She sort of takes Odysseus under her wing and really helps him along and wants him to get home and wants to support him and help him out. And often when he's found in a bit of a precarious situation, she'll extend uh, an exit strategy or she'll be there, you know, in a sort of, if there's a sort of moral sticky situation, she's often there in the guise of a mentor. Uh, and he talks to her and she helps him you know, providing point of view and, and helps him in making decisions uh, for what he can do. Because he comes across, there's lots of craziness in this one. Uh, like, there's a lot of it's at sea. There's a lot of, um, he gets captured a lot. 
this one is one actually he gets you kind of like used a lot you know a lot of people are like i want to keep you and a lot of women are like i want to keep you you know and it's kind of like if the roles were reversed it would not be a lot of like it would be like whoa what's going on and i don't know how guys feel reading this one <laughs> and having that as one of the things that happens over and over again um and then but there's so many for me there's so many awesome things um that you know that they're sort of more majestic and mystical things um from greek mythology that weren't in the iliad the iliad is very focused on war you know it's about the trojan war this one he's coming home he's at sea he encounters the sirens he encounters giants um there's even a part about the underworld and so for me that part was very rich interesting storytelling and settings that i really enjoyed um but there is like this one is also really tough um because well one the persistent suitors of um, Penelope are like is really you know 10 years can you imagine someone expecting hospitality from you for 10 years it's a really long period of time and it, it was really forceful and they really were you know wanting her to pick someone to uh to to saying that she couldn't you know she had to get married at some point you know and so that was it's really it's really oppressive and um and and then some of the other stuff that Odysseus goes through is is really challenging. And then like Odysseus is like he's like a really strong character, and like you know in this from the Iliad because he is like you know it's like I think it's is it his ship that has the black sails or is it Achilles? Like he's known for being a big big time military dude, and um, I'm sure that's a direct quote <laughs> from the Iliad, <laughs> big time military dude. So it's you know he is well skilled and uh can take people out so they're like so there's lots of tension and i'm not gonna like say like where it goes but this one was it is grisly really really grisly and I wasn't quite expecting that and i guess maybe i should have because some parts of the iliad are when they describe the war parts and the fighting they you know they they can get really detailed um but this one it was instead of being speckled throughout it's sort of like you know in one fell swoop and it's like whoa <laughs> so it definitely was a little crazy on that end um but um but i still found it a really enjoyable read i thought it was a great great story there's so many one of the things i love about this and the iliad is there's so many little stories throughout it like you can just t take the part with the giants or the sirens or at, at sea you know and those i'm sure there's lots of interpretations um you know or or works you know, other works of art and then just permeating like ideas of that that are come from this and permeated into culture into stories into tv shows into films into other books paintings anything performance art like there's there's so much in here that it's so rich and so for me that was one of the real joys of reading it was getting all of these little moments and i really enjoyed athena as well i really she's just a great a great presence and it, but it did overall it had a little less god interference or god's interference zeus is part of it but other than athena i can't i can't quite i don't actually recollect how many other gods are even well i guess hades is involved at some point um but but uh generally it's not like the iliad it was all sort of like let's move these you know pawns around and see what happens <laughs> you know or i'm gonna champion this person let's see what happens like it just felt like you know the humans were on the chessboard whereas this really follows one person you know and his epic journey and struggle to return home so you know it's a really powerful story and it's probably one that i will revisit uh which i don't know if i have said that about any of the other books i've read in the those books exploration i don't know if that's i probably would reread the wind in the willows that was oh that was really wonderful um but this one i feel like there's so much in it i can only get more from reading it again because although i did understand it a lot better than i was expecting and and all that stuff i'm sure as i continue 
continue to read and increase my reading comprehension, it'll only get better and better uh, to read it again and again over time. So there you go. There is the Odyssey. Um, I'm really curious as to check out some other works uh, based on this. There's actually, I didn't realize there's a novella by Margaret Atwood called The Penelopead. And it's actually, well, it's an ironic take on the Odyssey from Penelope's perspective. I'm not huge on irony, but I am curious about that. Um, I did in choose it initially because there is a film adaptation rumored, announced something in talks, um, and that was uh, well over a year ago now, involving Hugh, Hugh Jackman. But when I looked today, I didn't see any newer articles and I did not see it on IMDb. So that doesn't bode very well. But, you know, things can be in production and are, are in early stages. Who knows? Who knows when it'll come out, um, if it'll come out. I hope it'll come out. That's part of the reason I chose it. Um, and also, I'm, I'm one of the other books on the Those Books list I had flagged not to read until I read The Odyssey. And that is Ulysses by James Joyce, which has a strong correlation to the book, I think it takes each of the each of the sections in it sort of relates to a different section in this. So I know that that is sort of I think that's the number one on the modern library list, and it's one of the ones that people are just like too hard, <laughs> too hard or masterpiece. So I don't know if I'm quite there yet. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll take maybe I'll read it after my second read of the Odyssey. So lots of more books to enjoy. Up next is actually going to be of mice and men. So look for a review of that in the near future. All right, thanks for watching.